Hello, hello! Axel Wilkinson here, back with another hip film tutorial. This time, I wanted to discuss composite shots. Understanding composite shots is fairly critical to unleashing the potential of hip film, as they are an essential part of the compositing workflow. In hip film, we have two types of timelines. The editor timeline, which is track based and is used to add clips in sequence one after another. And we have composite shot timelines, which are layer based and allow you to stack layers on top of each other. There is a wide variety of situations where composite shots are useful. First, composite shots or comps allow you to take advantage of the 3D compositing abilities of hip film. The editor is only two dimensional. So creating and editing any of HitFilm's 3D effects is handled in composite shots. If you try to add a 3D effect to the editor, HitFilm will automatically create a comp so that you can edit that effect. Composite shots also allow you to implement keyframing. We have a separate tutorial that covers the subject of keyframing. You can follow the link to that, but it is a feature that is native to composite shots. So anytime you want to modify the properties of a clip or an effect over time, a composite shot allows you to do so. Comps can also be used for organizing your project, as they allow you to group layers together into a single object that can be more easily managed. Because composite shots are such an integral part of hit film, there are many ways to make them. In the media panel, you can create a blank comp from the new menu, or use the keyboard shortcut Control shift n The composite shot properties window opens, so we can specify details of our new comp. The default name is numerically sequenced. As you can see, this is the fifth composite shot I've made in this project. But you can change that to something more descriptive now or edit it later on. The template contains the video settings displayed here. It matches the editor settings by default, but other templates can be chosen from the menu. If your project requires custom video settings, you can enter them here. And then you can also save them as a new template for future use using this button with the disk icon. The duration defaults to 30 seconds in a blank comp, but you can adjust that as necessary, either now or later. In the Advanced tab, we have control over the fog and motion blur. Motion blur is covered in its own tutorial, so if you want more information on that, you can follow the link on your screen. Fog is used to simulate distance haze, which softens detail and contrast in objects as they get further away from the camera. It's not meant to be used as a visual effect for fog simulation, but rather just to enhance the realism and depth of the existing effects and elements in your comp. The near and far distance, measured from the camera position, allow you to control the range of distances affected by the fog. Density controls how thick the fog is. Fall off gives several options to control how quickly the fog intensifies as you move away from the camera. Linear gives the most subtle results, while exponential squared is the most intense. For the color, you can choose any color you want using the color picker, but it's usually best to use the pipette tool to try and match the color of the sky in your scene, preferably near the horizon. Once we have all of the properties dialed in the way we want, we can click the create button to create a new composite shot. If we jump over here, we can demonstrate the fog settings really quick. Here I have five copies of this robot that are getting farther and farther away from the camera. So now we can add some fog to this scene to see what that does. So we'll enable the fog. I adjusted a few of the other settings as well. For the color, I pulled a color using the pipette from our clouds up here so that it matches the scene. And now when we click OK, notice what happens to the color in these robots that are farthest from the camera. You notice right away that they kind of gray out. We lose the contrast uh, and the saturation in that color as it's grayed out by the fog in front of it. So. If you need fog, if that will help in your particular scene, then we, there is the options here to control that. But of course, by default, it's off and it's not necessary for every scene. Getting back to the methods for making a composite shot, in the media panel, you can also right click on any existing media object and choose make composite shot from the menu. You'll see the same properties window, but this time the template, the duration and the video settings are matched to the properties of the source clip we selected. And we can still edit any of these settings if we wish to, but anytime you use a clip as a source to make a comp, the properties of the clip will be used as the default settings. I'm going to cancel that. In the editor, anytime you add a 3D effect, as we saw earlier, 
it's necessary for a composite shot to be created, and this will be handled automatically. But you can also right click on any clip or image on the editor or any timeline and choose Make Composite Shot, just like we did in the media panel. You'll notice that you get a different window when converting from a clip on a timeline. This is because once a clip has been added to a timeline, any changes made to its controls have to be taken into consideration. If you have added effects or masks to the layer, if you've adjusted its transform properties or otherwise tweaked its settings, HitFilm needs to know what to do with those changes. Also, since the properties of the clip may not match those of the timeline, HitFilm needs to know which properties to use when making the comp. If you look at the specific wording on this window and we compare that to the wording in the same window if we convert a composite shot layer to a new comp, you'll notice there are some differences, uh, just as far as what each of the buttons says and so forth, but the actual functions served by these buttons are exactly the same. The differences in terminology are simply due to the differences between track-based and layer-based timelines. The name is taken directly from the source clip, but it can be altered to help keep things organized if you wish. In the Properties From section, you can either use the properties of the selected clip or layer, or those of the timeline that it resides in. If the resolution, frame rate, or some other properties of the clip differ from those used by the timeline, then you can select which settings are used for the comp. The second two buttons control how any modifications to the layer are handled. If you have added masks, effects, or adjusted the transform properties of the layer, then you can decide whether those changes stay on the current timeline or are moved with the clip. If you choose Leave Here, then all these adjustments will be removed from the actual layer and be applied to the composite shot that we're about to create. If you choose Move With Layer, then they will stay applied to the layer that you are converting and will be moved with that layer so that they're now inside of the composite shot we're creating. So, as an example of this, I'm going to turn off the effects here for a second so we just have our robot layer. And suppose we want to make this robot invisible using displacement. And I've used several masks and keying filters to remove the background from this layer so that all I have is the robot. You can see them here on the timeline. So, let's apply a displacement effect to our cloud's background. We'll turn off our Night Morpher layer and then open up the controls for the displacement. We select the Night Morpher as the source, use the alpha for the channel, and we crank that up. And you can see that we're getting displacement, but it's just a rectangle because the shape is being taken from the source layer before any masks or keying filters were applied. But this is easily rectified. We can simply right-click the Night Morpher layer choose Make Composite Shot, and in our options, now we need to decide what we want to do with those masks and effects that are altering what portions of the layer are visible. If we move them with Layer, and then click Convert, now here's that layer inside our composite shot with all of those masks and effects still applied to it. And when we switch back to our Robot 1 comp where the original layer was, now we have a composite shot in its place which has no masks or effects because they were moved into the comp with the layer. And the result is that those changes are now baked into the alpha channel of the composite shot. So now, if we select that displacement layer again, we're already set to alpha. I'll turn off that robot layer, choose the Night Morpher composite shot, and now the shape of our robot is visible in our displacement effect, just like we want. So, embedding changes or baking in changes to a layer in this way is one function served by composite shots. Comps can also be useful for organizing things. I'm actually going to delete this displacement effect and I'll turn our robot back on and then say we want to add some effects to our robot to make him more awesome. So we have this rad robot, but suppose now we want to make two rad robots. Well, we could easily select all five of these layers containing the robot and the effects, right click and choose duplicate, and then we have two copies of each layer with very similar names, and we could go through and select one copy of each, and we could move them over, and now we have a second robot. But we also have ten layers required to make those robots. Suppose we wanted four robots in this scene, we'd end up with twenty layers and a bunch of duplicate names, and things could get very confusing and cumbersome very quickly. So, I'm going to undo that, and instead, what if we select our five layers, and then we right-click and choose Make Composite Shot. 
You'll notice we don't really have any options in the screen that appears, other than changing the name. But when we click Convert, now we get a new composite with all of those layers in it. And back on the Robot 1 timeline, those five layers are replaced by a single layer, that embedded composite shot, which contains the robot and all the effects. Now you'll notice, in this case, the appearance of these flames has actually changed significantly. This is because in the individual layers, the two layers that make up those flames use an add blend mode, while the other layers do not. And so when those are all combined into a single 2D object here in the Robot 1 timeline, you can't use multiple blend modes in a single object. So to correct that, we just need to convert this 2D layer to a 3D unrolled composite, and that way each of the layers inside that comp can use its own blend mode and positioning information. So, with just one object now on this timeline, it's much simpler to duplicate that layer to create as many copies of the robot as we want. We can have a whole fleet of robots up here. Uh, is that the right word? Do robots travel in fleets? I don't know. What's the correct group word for robots? If you know the answer to that one, post it in the comments below, because I want to know. Anyway, we now have all of these robots, and the timeline is much cleaner and simpler. In addition, since each of these copies is referencing the same source comp, if we decide we need to change something about the robot, perhaps the angle of the jet flames, then when we make those changes in the original, all of the copies are immediately updated. So here, let's select each of these, and I'm just going to rotate them so they're pointing more straight down. And now when we go back, the jets are pointing straight down on all three copies of that robot. Think for a minute about how much fun it would be to make that change to the angle if we had copied all of the layers individually. And you can see very quickly how useful composite shots can be for keeping things organized and for duplicating complex elements of your scene. If you're already within a composite shot, then you can convert 3D effects to a comp as well. If you ever need to apply 2D effects or masks to a 3D layer, then it's necessary to convert it to a composite shot first using this technique. The composite shot properties will be taken from the current timeline, the layer will be moved inside the new comp, we click convert, and now we have a new composite shot containing that effect, which is embedded into the previous comp as a 2D layer. So now that layer can be masked or we can add effects to it just like we would any 2D layer. All right, I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna close a few of these that we don't need. So each new comp that is created exists as an object in the media panel and can be used on any timeline of your project just like normal media. You can select one and drag it to a timeline. You can trim their length as you see fit. You can slice them with the razor tool now trimming a comp object won't affect the contents of the comp at all. It merely adjusts the portion of the comp which is shown in the current timeline. To change the actual length of a comp, we have to edit its properties. So for example, in this gunfire effect here, we've trimmed this down pretty short, but when we open the actual new gunfire effect composite, it's still 30 seconds long. We haven't changed the actual length, we've simply adjusted how much of that length is visible here on the editor. So to edit its properties, we can click the gear icon here in the media panel, and that opens those up so we can edit them. We can right click the object on the timeline and choose composite shot settings to get to the same screen. Or if the composite shot is open, then you can click the properties button here on the timeline to edit the properties as well. So I hope this helps you all to understand better when and why composite shots can be used, some of their functions, and how to work with them. Uh, let us know if you have any further questions. We do have some really cool tutorials in the works for the near future, so I recommend subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, so that you don't miss those. Thanks a bunch for watching this, and I'll catch you next time.